and welcome back. Uh, we are moving into our second segment for today. Tomorrow, residents of towns and the two cities are going to head to the polls to decide who will lead their individual municipality. And uh, we have with us this morning, Joseph Sampson, who is a history lecturer at the University of Belize. As we just talk about uh, the history of the different municipal elections and just uh, some of the things that we are seeing around the country at this time as we head into tomorrow. Good morning. Good morning, Marlene. Good morning, Mr. Office. <laughs> wearing your political analyst hat today, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. And wearing black, too. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you too. For today. For today. I, I'm, I don't promise it's going to be the same tomorrow. <laughs> so, yeah. the 2018 municipal elections uh, is falling within the m halfway through the cycle of the general elections. And that has uh, various implications. There are some who say, eh, it doesn't really matter. And there are others who believe that it is a referendum on the central government at this time. What's your thought? Um, before I, could I, 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 I kind of yeah. like to preempt before I get into the meat of the matter. Um, I would like to speak a little bit about the significance of tomorrow. Yeah. It's part of what we call democracy, yeah. right? And I think one of the difficulties we repeatedly experience in Belize is that we make a mistake between what is democracy and what is party politics, right? Yeah. And so I want people in parties to understand one thing, that democracy is the will of the people. It is by the people and it is for the people. And it's not for a small group of people to decide who <laughs> their representatives will be, whether it be through the party, whether the people will run tomorrow. Yes, of course, they run on a party ticket. But at the end of the day, they run to serve their communities. So for democracy to be kept alive, the parties that participate in politics must be democratic. And if they are not democratic, they must democratize themselves. Because at the end of the day, people understand, maybe we, don't, we are not aware. Many times we lose elections because we injure the very system that we proclaim. So my advice to all political parties, please respect democracy and make democracy work. Well, I, I, you know, you, you said something in it, and maybe it's better to start there. Mm. Kevin had mentioned earlier in the show, and we have seen it ourselves, there's a lot happening in Belize City at this time. I mean, we've spent a lot of time talking about it, but one of the outputs uh, that we're seeing is that people are calling for a boycott of the election yeah. come tomorrow. People are saying, I will not vote because you need me and I will not show up because you're not showing up for children. Essentially, that, those are my words. It's an interesting way to see a protest. Um, <laughs> You know, I think for people who are democratic-minded, we do not see it as a protest. Um, but obviously, in the midst of the voter apathy that we've been seeing and the frustration with our governance systems, people are saying, I just don't want to vote. What are your thoughts on this? Um, again, democracy. Democracy, you have the right to vote, you have the right not to vote. Yeah. You have the right to speak, you have the right not to speak. And the democratic system is so set up, as uh, Mr. Price said many years ago, that the majority will have their way, even though the minority will have their say. So at the end of the day, um, I think people should vote. And why do I say so? Because if five people go to vote tomorrow, and one party gets three and one gets two, the party that gets the three <laughs> votes will be the government, regardless of the thousands that refuse to go. Mm -hmm. So. The best way to register any sentiment, I think, is to actively participate in the process. So mm -hmm. while I respect the, um, the, 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 those people who see um, a show of protest yeah. as something, sick, I respect their thinking about it, but I beg to defer. I think that people should actively participate in the process. But this is where it's important to go back mm -hmm. into history. When I talk to young people, and I love encouraging mm -hmm. young people to vote, because I know they're not always interested. Mm -hmm. I always tell people I was weird. Yeah. I turned 18, I was excited to go register. <laughs> I wanted to yeah. vote. Mm -hmm. But 
I also was very aware as to what it took for a woman, person of color, mm -hmm. to vote within Belize. And even going back to when you used to, oh, you, peop, the people who used to vote were the only people who owned property. Yeah. So yeah. talk to us about the transition just between yeah. who is able to vote right. in this country now. In the colonial times, as I said, it was people with property. Yeah. And I even run a joke up to the day when I talk to students, I say, if they required us to have $100 in the bank tomorrow morning to go and vote, you'd be surprised how many people would not be able to vote. I probably would not be able to vote. <laughs> <laughs> well, of it's course. True. And the politicians that go for the death, they say that vote, and they go back afterwards, but that is it. Um, in 1950, um, under Mr. Price and the, and, uh, and, uh, the, the committee, the, the, the committee that was formed in 1949, right? One of the first things they did was to fight for universal adult suffrage. You know, sometimes we hear universal adult suffrage and we take it for granted. But there were countries that had universal manhood suffrage. <laughs> Only men could vote. In 1954, we got universal adult suffrage. Mm -hmm. As long as you were a citizen of the country and you had reached the age of 21 at that time, you had the right to vote. Yeah. Now, the, 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 the voting age was lowered somewhere in, in the late 1970s. And it was very interesting, and I was alive then. <laughs> it was very interesting because people felt when the voting age was lowered that the People's United Party that had held on to power all this time was going to finally lose power. Interestingly, they won the 1979 general elections, even with the lowering of the voting age. Mm. All right? I, yeah. I, I'd like to go forward a little yeah. bit. I, I just I have one okay. thing to sure. say at this time, yeah. and it maybe may segue a, a part mm -hmm. of the conversation. Uh, we just got confirmation that the four-year-old boy who was shot uh, last night has passed away. So um, obviously the hospital worked very hard in being able to save. Uh, this child, and we just wanted our viewers to know because we opened with it and we said he was only shot and was um, in surgery. So uh, that is an update that we wanted to provide at this time, right? I had to get that in, and, and maybe, as I said, I use it as a, as a segue for uh, this conversation. His name is Treshawn Goff, shot last night on Nurse Finley Crescent, and he died this morning at the KGMH. Maybe I could fold the two into one. Yeah. That, that's extremely sad for me. Yeah. Um, I, I feel that like the criminal elements have become unbelizian. A Belizean criminal is not somebody who hurts grandmothers and babies. And as insulting as this might sound, that's something I heard when I was studying in Jamaica. In Belize, we don't do that. But as upset I am, as I am with where we are as a society, um, I, I want to bridge the gap between our two conversations and that um, update. How much of national issues, like crime in particular, do you think will affect voter turnout? Let me kind of um, dip into the big basket of history. And that matter may also um, state that, um, or ask a question, why have we as a society turned against our children? One. Secondly, why have we as a society been unable to provide the safety, the security for our children and of course adults to enjoy a happy life in this beautiful jewel of ours? What is the problem? And have we been so um, comforting to those people who impose their evil ways on us? Another question. But to go to your point, and could you please repeat it again if you don't mind? <laughs> my, my question is um, How much national issues yeah. impact municipal elections? Every election today is national. Whether it's you know, the NGOs, whether it's uh, the village council level. Whereas tomorrow it's the municipal elections and whenever they call it general election. And even international, because the technology today has enabled uh, people from different countries to weigh in as to what is happening here. And even Belize them to live abroad, weigh in on what is happening in Belize. Maybe they cannot literally physically vote, but they can use their influences to encourage the people here who vote 
to vote in, a, vote in a particular direction. And whether we like it or not, we're going into these elections tomorrow, and the national concerns will be paramount. Whether we like it or not, it doesn't matter which party you belong to, your concern will be crime. And uh, the most recent heinous crimes have kind of exposed us to the fact that we are almost helpless in dealing with crime. Any society that is unable to get a grip on criminal elements is a society that is in decay. And that decay must be arrested. It needs to be arrested and seriously. And I think, you know, many times we are afraid to speak out because we want to save and protect our own lives and those of our families. But we don't realize when we remain quiet, what we're actually doing is providing the, the framework, the foundation, and the support for those people who will use fear and intimidation to control the society. But then again, that is also linked. Whenever you have a breakdown anywhere, and that breakdown is not addressed, and those who are supposed to be the guardians of the society are part of that breakdown, then you have a serious problem. I think we have a question to ask ourselves tomorrow. And I am not going to stand here and call any names of anybody or any persons. On a conscience basis, we go to the polls tomorrow. When we go to the polls and vote for the people we will vote for, we have to think about our children. We have to think about, about those kids whose lives have been lost in this ridiculous atmosphere that has been created in our community. And we have to speak out about it, that it's a fact. I have grandchildren. I don't know the young, the, the little girl that was hurt, but like every Belizean of goodwill, it is painful. I have a granddaughter who's just about two years old. When I look at her and I think about that child, it's a painful thing to even imagine. Is so where are we as a society going? Are we going to go tomorrow and vote because somebody has given us a bribe? Do you think people make the distinction going to the polls? Because it's interesting. I know we always say it, and we did in our, in, in our interviews as well uh, with the candidates that we, w we could interview, that while issues like crime, for example, are not their mandate, yeah. it is a very, imp it is probably the most important issue yeah. uh, tied with corruption issues mm -hmm. in the country. And, it's, and, and I'm just asking if you yeah. think, do you think Belizeans make a distinction between whether it's your responsibility or not as yeah. a municipal body and who I'm electing, yeah. or is it just government is government, whether central or local? I have come to learn that Belizeans are smarter than sometimes we give them credit. And uh, the very fact that we have had changes of government from time to time is an indication of how Belizeans think. Now, we are under this impression that our people can vote the election. My thing is that if people could have voted the election, we have never changed governments. Because Point. people who run governments, they always have access <laughs> to the public purse. And they use it. Now let's not fool ourselves. Yeah. Is it right? But we have to ask ourselves the question. If I'm going to go and vote tomorrow, am I going to vote because you promised me a piece of land? Who gave you that land to promise me? You give me land that belongs to this country, that belongs to all of us. It's not your right. The money you're giving is taxpayers' money, it's not yours. So you give me back. You give me back, exactly. So why should I pay you to give me something that belongs to me by voting for you? Because I have 350,000 people I could give it to. But if you vote for me, I give it to you. Politics is defined right. it, it, by it, it, who right. gets, yeah, exactly. who distributes. But what? I believe that people are beginning to understand, you know something? When you give me $100 and you take a million for yourself, we are in serious problems. Who's going to pay for that million? <laughs> your children, my children, your children, my grandchildren. So when we vote tomorrow, who are we voting for? We, don't have, we, we should not vote for ourselves. We should vote for the next generation. But right? you, you seem to be discounting the impact that money will make on the elections. And we have seen in a recent elections uh, where, uh, by, based on one political party accusation, mm -hmm that petro Carib money was, in fact, a substantial factor in success for one party. How much, my question is, how much do you think money, and it, there seems to be a bit of money circulating in Belize right now, how much do you think money will mm -hmm. play a part 
in tomorrow's municipal elections? I'll be honest with you, Mr. Artis. I really don't think money plays the role that, to the extent that people to think. Mm -hmm. um, and I go back to, or else we'll never change government. Oh, yeah. One. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, um, I think Belizeans are decent people. Belizeans are people of conscience. Yeah. Belizeans are people who are very family oriented. And Belizeans think about their children. Many of us are successful today because of the sacrifices that our parents and our grandparents ma made. And Belizeans tomorrow will make the sacrifice necessary for their children going down the road and their grandchildren. But what, what about the statistics that almost 45% of our population is poor? And so if I'm poor and you dwindle, $100 is a, lot of money. Is a week salary for me. Yeah, I, 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 could, I could see your point, but I think that, you know, yeah. um, yes, people might say I could dole out 100 or get votes, whatever the case might be. But remember that people will look at that even within the context of the things that have been happening. Yeah. Remember, even though it's a local election, and you will notice something, it's a local election, but how many of the local issues are being ventilated? Mm -hmm. Most of the things you hear about are of national concern. Yeah. Right? At that least they're the city. At least for Belize, Belize you're in Belmopan. What's your in experience Dangriga, there? Dangriga, I, I live in Dangriga. Yeah. I work in Belmopan. Yeah. I live in Dangriga. People in Dangriga are concerned about a lot of the, the issues in, Belize, um, yeah. in the whole country as a matter of fact. And mm -hmm. even probably what's affecting them. We have unemployment problems in Dangriga. We have a lot of people who don't have jobs, don't have means, etc. But I'm sure, I mean, I, you know, I, I am sure So that in your municipality in Dangriga, we seem to be seeing it in Belize City, mm -hmm. people are more talking about national issues. Exactly, because national issues are the things that actually, at the end of the day, put bread and butter on the table. Mr. Samson, how much, and, and we're really just having a discussion here, so mm -hmm. I, I know quite a bit of it is opinion, and I've heard mm -hmm. the opinion as well that people feel like money doesn't really influence votes, but I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I can say this, we're talking about it openly, and it's illegal. It's illegal. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I've been an active people. politician, I've been an active politician for years, and yeah. I was mayor of Dangriga. Yeah. I don't ever remember paying anybody to vote for me. I don't remember. Yeah, but we I live, didn't have the money we, to pay anybody to begin with. We live in, we live in, a, in a certain <laughs> we, we culture a of age. dependency. And, and I think that, that we, can't, we can't pretend like that does not exist. Yeah. But let me... Let me well, Ms. Marlene, we live in a culture of dependency. But you give me $100, I eat that out today, what happens tomorrow? Right? Yeah, but then you think I come back will, with my light bill a month later, later and I say, remember, I vote for you, right. and they pay your light bill. Right. And then Whether or not there was proof that you voted or mm -hmm. not, we, yeah. we do see, I mean, why, why do people go we, with monthly bills we, to, them, to, to a minister for, yeah. We know about the patronage system, and it's, the patronage system is not new to Belize. Yeah, but the patronage system was even practiced in Europe, it was practiced in, yeah. in, uh, in Latin America, it was a practice in America, right? But my, yeah. I, I wanted to go back to one point. There, there are many different schools of thoughts when yeah. it comes to elections. And one is that very, that no, in fact, people don't vote in a government. Yeah. They vote out. out. Yep. How but much yeah. do you subscribe to that, this? That is, that is true. And that is why elections and are And that's so not just Belize. No, no, they, that's why elections are cyclical. After a certain time, the honest truth is that it doesn't matter how much you give people. After a certain time, they get tired of you. Yeah. Right, they get what they call they get uh, they fatigue. 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 fatigue, and they want you. They want something new. They want something to excite them. It's like eating the same right. thing every day yeah. and then I saying. Mean, I see some signs around. Um, say that Riga which says building on success. They're like, what success you're talking about? You understand me? Right. You you, you should be. Able, I mean, people are not blind. Well, there is in right? Riga there is the multi-purpose center, which is a tremendous upgrade. Dangriga has never seen, I could remember playing basketball at Wynat Island. And the high school I went to, Mr. Otters, was by the sea. It was a broken down school. And that high school has, has uh, given birth to some of the yeah, biggest definitely. and the greatest minds in Belize. Yeah. Right? So and, and I don't think that, I don't think that, like, I, while I'm not discounting the center, that is fine. Yes. Right? Um, but if you actually delve into that center and all the controversies surrounding it, you'd probably have a different view. But um, Do people do that, though? Do people look at, yeah. I mean, if I see a beautiful building and a street, I just say, well, you know, and my, car, my, my, my car take less damage. I see but a beautiful building, what about my house where I live? I see a beautiful building, what about my house where I live? If you, you, sp I say you spend $10 million on a beautiful building, 
when you could have probably spent that 10 million and provided 100 persons with at least a proper foundation for a proper house, sanitation, otherwise. Yeah. You understand right. me? But so there has to be, you have to think people. Yeah. Right? You build a building that at the end of the day nobody will be able to maintain, you have a problem. There's an aspect of politics though, uh -huh. which is novelty. And we saw Mayor Bradley bring novelty in Belize City with the cement streets. And the argument was uh, by the opposition, listen, you cement 15 streets with that same amount of money you could have um, hot paved a hundred. But people in politics like novelty. So the fact that we have a Civic Center, which is huge. The fact that we have a multi-purpose center for the first time in Dandriga is huge because people, they don't worry about the details. The details take time. And politics is about perception. You have, a novel, you have novelty. You also, you also have people who are going to vote tomorrow who have been living in paved streets. It's not a novelty. You have people who are watching TV and seeing these wonderful buildings all over the world. It's not a novelty. <laughs> so I that kind of novelty to me is something that I think it's a, it's, a, it's a trick on the mind. But and we're fooling see, ourselves. But you see, you, I, I right? want to go back to the fatigue question because municipal elections are different, though. We have, let, let, me, let me go through my mind. I'm, I'm, I don't have my list. In Belize City, mm -hmm. the UDP has been in leadership for four terms. Yes. In San Pedro, the same. Elsa Paz and Daniel Guerrero. In Benke, Benke it's forever. Fifth, it's uh, Santa, San Ignacio Santa Elena is 15. Yeah. Um, it's forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, what I'm trying to get at is we talk about yeah. what people perceive to be a, a, a fatigue of having the same party over and over. Uh -huh. But in specifically municipal elections, we don't, uh, people don't seem to flip flop as much as, as you're saying. Well, um, you know, at one time they used to have this slogan a vote for the party in government. Uh, because, so you can have the corporation. Mm -hmm. When I was mayor of Dangriga, and allow me to say this, I, we won an election uh, as a PUP councillors and a PUP mayor when the UDP was in government. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't all that dreadful because I was the mayor at that time. Mm -hmm. And even though things were tough financially, but I, I, I come from a UDP family actually. And so I had a very good relationship with the, with the guys in government. I used to go and sit in the office, and we used to get certain things done, you know, because it's a people-to-people -people thing, right? Okay, um, but municipal elections, actually, people are very interested in municipal elections yeah. because they are those people, as I said, who will use the national issues to determine, especially people of a higher level of thinking, that it's the national issues that affect them, people of conscience. I mean, like... You know, there are a lot of issues are ventilating yeah. in Belize. You have crime, um, you have the, the, the money business, you have, um, um, you know, a lot of stuff, right, that's affecting people. And of course, there are those people who are thinking, well, I better stay the course because then I could enjoy whatever is around right now. But the other point is that there are persons who are thinking outside of just me, me and me, but thinking about the society as a whole, the image of the society, where we are going, what is the direction. And we have to, you know, continue to push people. You should not be afraid of the people you put in the office. They're your servants, right? Mm -hmm. And what they use to develop the country is not their personal property. The lands in Belize don't belong to anybody in particular. It belongs to all of us. So it's not a gift. Let's, let's look back at, at, the, at the history of this. A, a mid-cycle election like what we'll, we will be having tomorrow, how often do we have high voter turnout? Um, and how often do we see major changes taking place? Um, in Belize, voter turnout varies depending on, on locality yeah. and the interests and the issues at play. This election, it's very interesting because, in my view, I may be wrong, I believe that the ruling party in some localities will have less luck bringing out its followers. I think their position is uh, more galvanized and, and, and energized and, and want the, Their position has, is hungry for power. Their position has been out of power for a long time. Mm -hmm. And like even the other man will tell you on the street, you know, I tell I lose. You know, because people take these things seriously. So in some areas tomorrow, maybe a place like Orange Walk, you'll probably see. You know, a place like Corozal, you know, 
Uh, a place like Dangriga, Dangriga used all the whole world in the 60s, mm -hmm. right? Not, not much more than that. Belmapan, I suspect there will be a high turnout to Belmapan as well. Belmapan is an interesting place because really Belmapan has some of the worst issues in terms of governance. Not at the local level, because I, as I told the mayor of Belmapan, I think he's a great guy. Uh, and I'm honest about that. He's a great guy. I haven't heard any scandal about that guy. He does his work. And mm -hmm. some people might be mad with me for saying so, but reality is reality. It's right? like the mayor of Orange Walk. Everybody adores that guy. That guy gets things done. He has yeah. gotten things mm -hmm. done. Yeah. It was like when Kasha Nunes was there as mayor. He got things done. People just love the guy. All right? But Belmapan has a lot. I mean, Belmapan has crime, serious crime situation. Belmapan has a lot of poverty there. Belmapan has a lot of de dependency. But Belmapan is also one of the places that a lot of investment has gone into. So there will be a thing tomorrow. And whether I like it or not, you know, there are people in Belmapan in governance there who, whether they like it or not, they nurse their constituency. Can I so the work of their position, I'm not saying their position can't win it. What I'm saying is that they have to work harder. Can I ask a, a wider question? Because sure. it's, it's, like, it's like a movie opens in theaters tomorrow, uh -huh. and you want to see as many of the trailers as possible. <laughs> you know? Um, and, and this is a very important movie coming out mm -hmm. tomorrow. Can you address us on the wider issue of your opinion as it relates to what, would you con what, do, you, what do you think can be considered a win for the government? in these Because it's a midterm election, mm -hmm. so to speak. What would we, you consider an acceptable win for the government, for the UDP, and what would be considered a loss? And the same, what would be considered a win for the opposition, and what would be considered a loss? If the opposition get five more seats tomorrow, they have won. Because they only have a small amount. So the, 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 opposition, the opposition is the only party tomorrow that is going to benefit from the elections. The only party. They are the, the government party. Whether, whether they lose one or two seats, they are losing. Right? And I think that is the reason why you're seeing the leaders of the party, you know, up and down the country. Because, you know, it's like, it's like you, are, you have this. Right? You can only come down. And in their case, they can only come down. Every time there is a seat won against them, they are going down and down and down. Mm -hmm. In the case of the opposition, which is there, every seat that it gets, it goes up and up and up. So as long as the opposition gets more seats tomorrow than the government, the opposition has won the election, whether you want to use it in America or otherwise. Has gained ground. They have won the election. <laughs> if they don't win 10 more seats. That, is, that is the fact. But I am, you know, I mean, as I'm studying the situation, but I, did, I did some crude polling, and, you know, if you want to talk about it at some point, mm -hmm. I did some crude polling. I also got some polling from a niece of mine who is heavy UDP, you know, we communicate. She sent me her uh, two different sets of polls. And then, of course, we have. But other, other, you know. Before we go into that, because I yeah. think one of the opportunities we have having you here as a lecturer at the university mm -hmm. is we get mixed reactions from the young people. Some yeah. are saying, okay, we want to go out and vote, but the majority are just not interested. What are you finding with our youngest minds in the country? Let me share with my experience. And I told, I told somebody just, just recently, we get hyped up about young people, and I think you, young people should be involved. But believe you me, Thanks. I remember running a convention in Dangriga on a Sunday against a minister of government at that time. And uh, the guy was strategic. The guy chose a day when NBA was on. <laughs> and he set the voting out. I, I wasn't aware of the afterwards. <laughs> so when NBA was playing, the young people are then to NBA. Right? By the time NBA was finished and they rushed to come and vote, the polls were closed. Who won? They did. What, so the NBA it, game? Huh? <laughs> Who won in the NBA game? <laughs> so my point is that Young people will show hype. Yeah. They will show interest. And it will be very good to get them to the polls. You're saying they're unreliable? I, I don't want to use that term. They're not as invested. <laughs> they're not, yeah, they're right. Because so they, they, they will tell you, I mean, <laughs> oh, it's a waste of time. <laughs> what am I going to, you know, I've, I've, I, I, I come to school, I see this, yeah. I have to struggle, you know? I mean, okay. you have university students at the University of Belize. Even though I, I keep telling students, at the University of Belize, you pay of the lowest fees you yeah. pay for any university in the world. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess because a lot of our kids are poor, if you put $5 extra, it becomes burdensome. Yeah. All right? The, the students will feel, well, you know something? I mean, in my view, 
young people who vote are elected to vote for a change. Mm. They are elected to vote for a change because they are restless and they want to see things moving. And as I said, I came from an era when the roads in Belize, all of them were dirt roads. So I know the difference. But there are those who have grown up with paved streets. So they only tell them I pay for streets, I cement a street. And I mean nothing to them. So let me, let me ask you, because we've got to wrap up this segment. Oh. What are some of the areas that you're most interested in watching tomorrow? Well, Dan Griga, which I honestly, and I have given my honest opinion, and I, it's honest based on the fact that not only that I am a, and I'll be honest about it, I'm a supporter of the People's United Party. Let's mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to disclose that. that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that the People's United Party will win Dan Griga. Uh, with no disrespect to my friend and colleague, Mr. Humphrey. Mm -hmm. He has been my friend for many years, a colleague. Uh, he's a guy that I respect a lot. I think he's a very honest guy. He's very sincere. But the cycle will catch him tomorrow. Yeah. Right? So nothing, nothing for us, Mr. Humphreys. The cycle will catch him tomorrow. What, the what People's United there? Party will win in Dangriga. I also suspect that the People's United Party will win a range walk. No, but I, I mean, what mm. areas do you think will be, will be interesting to follow, I think? Uh, that, that I was think more Belize City question. and Belmapan are the two areas yeah. that are interesting because somehow I suspect that there is a, some kind of sentiment in, in Belize City which is not clear. Yeah. In my, from what yeah. I'm saying, I could be wrong. Belmapan, as I said, is interesting because Belmapan, if there is any place that has gotten a lot of government investment, it is in Belmapan. Belmapan is a lovely city. It's not full of stuff. I didn't mm -hmm. surprise. The founder of Belmopan, Mr. Price, would be one of the proudest persons. And I, I somehow would like to say that it seems to be that Mr. Barrow, I remember when he spoke at Mr. Price's funeral, yeah. whether we like it or not, Mr. Barrow admires Mr. Price. Mm -hmm. And that city that Mr. Price found, and Mr. Barrow, along with Mr. Khalid and Honorable John, have helped to build. They have done a wonderful job. But as I said, there are other issues. That are still yeah? unfair. Because I can see for the buildings if I'm not eating good, if I cannot pay to, pay to go to work, if, to school, school yeah. that's a problem. So I, I wanted I, to ask one question in mm -hmm. terms of, uh, we spoke about what is a gain or a loss mm -hmm. for the major political parties. Mm -hmm. But in certain municipalities, I think Dangriga is not one of them. Um, the third party. Yeah. Why, why is it Dangriga is not one? The, the, has a third party. It has a third party candidate? Oh, no, no, no. They oh, okay. have the they unity? Don't. They don't. They don't. No, not, not in this. Not, not in this. Not in this yeah. But could you talk to us about the impact and progress, if any, of third parties the, tomorrow? Uh, again, people might not want to hear this, but the truth of the matter, the only third party that has ever had impact in Belize it's has been the vision inspired by the people. Well, they... They have done tremendously well. In Belmapan, for example, they have... There are one or two times that they actually defeated uh, major candidates yeah. from, um, you know, from um, the, 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 the PUP one and the UDP. I can't Papa. sit here and not, yeah. and not yeah. reflect on the neighbor, though. Mm -hmm. So. Wilson's third neighbor party. was not a third party. That was just an extension of the UDP. Let's be honest. <laughs> That's an extension of the UDP. I think there are people right? who they came disagree. together, <laughs> and as soon as elections were called in June, yeah, the mistake that the UDP made in, uh, in June, June 1993 was to call early elections because those people were quarrelling. As soon as elections were called, neighbor came back home <laughs> and they won the election. Uh, uh, that was not neighbor okay. was a UDP. But, but <laughs> overall, we, we got to wrap up, huh? right? Overall, what do you think the impact? What do you think the impact of the third parties will be? None. None. Not at this time. Yeah. Third parties. I have again. I have a third party candidate. I think Paco. Mm -hmm. Paco, Paco Smith, Smith in yes. Belize City. A guy I respect. Paco a lot. He's my good friend. And the ever but, determined Mr. And Bo, Bo is also my very good friend. Mm -hmm. Right? Third party. And I have a third party mentality as well, even within the PUP. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is that at this point in the history of Belize, mm -hmm. third parties, the, the, the vision is spread up by the people would have been the, the, the nucleus that I think they would have, if they had come around that, yeah. they would be in a better position. But why do we end up with all these? We've had as much as 100 third parties in Belize over the years. Check the history. Let me play, well, let me play this okay, for uh -huh. me. The last election, the margin in Belize City was maybe about 2,000 votes, was the margin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, the third party candidates as a committee, mm -hmm. if you add all of them together, got maybe about 700 mm -hmm. votes mm -hmm. in total. Mm -hmm. Now, we've seen the reintroduction of Colonel Hyde into elections, mm -hmm. who won by a margin of 2,000 votes. Mm -hmm. So let's say, since it's not a general election, mm -hmm. that maybe half of that margin mm -hmm. is brought in. Mm -hmm. So the margin that was previously 2,000, a 2,000 vote gap, is cut in half by Alikai, which is overperforming. Mm -hmm. 
and we have the 700, which is by these persons. Mm -hmm. Then the gap is only 300, which... Th that was three years ago. So. Well, I was <laughs> different hey, era, different I numbers of three years I, ago. I don't know about this people one, have right? died. Because people have died. Know. People have migrated. New people have moved. More persons have registered and transferred. That's our different argument. And we don't know how many people have been converted. You really can't. Exactly. Who's and and even that. if they're not converted, there are people who are just content people. And I was going to say, right? we always Remember tend the to forget of to say that there are people in this country yeah. who don't vote by color. And exactly. I know people who are very color aligned are not comfortable. They, that yeah. is something unfathomable for them. Yeah. But the there are many people in this country <laughs> yeah. who don't vote by exactly. color. And the, and the government, this government and uh, Mr. Barrow, they have taken some bold steps, which, uh, believe you me, you have the Christian community, <laughs> especially the Burma you got to watch them. All right. They're not pleased with certain things. That's it. we got to wrap okay. it up, right? All That's right. previews of coming attractions <laughs> tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> It'll be this all day long. But we most know. importantly, we want you to know that we are deploying our teams yeah. uh, from tonight. They're going to be in all the municipalities. We're yeah. going to start our broadcast at 6 a.m. tomorrow. Yeah. We'll have people on set to have discussions yeah. very much like this. We'll be looking at the historical aspect, the new voters, uh, all the shifts that we're seeing, and uh, most importantly, live uh, video updates uh, from across the country. Uh, so tune in at 6 a.m. It's an early morning for us. 6 a.m. tomorrow morning for a municipal election coverage. Thank you. I feel like uh, we, we, that was the appetizer <laughs> for tomorrow. We got to go ahead and take a break. We friends? will be uh, continuing the show with the BTEC training <laughs> and workshop schedule for 2018. So stay tuned. <laughs> well, one of my friends said, let's Marlene and our friends.